We're in the milk parlor right now, and today the liners are gonna be changed on our ADF milk claws here. There's basically a rubber lining here where the teat of the cow goes in, and this needs to be replaced every, I believe, 2,000 milkings or so. So that's gonna be happening today. This is the ADF control box right here. There's the start and stop buttons for the beginning and ending of milkings. And then there's the service button up here. Now this thing blinks and that tells you when to order new liners. So if it blinks once within five seconds, order new liners twice within five seconds, change them. And if it starts blinking three times within five seconds, you're past due. You need to get those liners changed as soon as possible. It counts how many milkings are on each individual milk claw. These are all the old liners. They just cut them in half to rip them out easier. The same guys that put our new liners in the milk claws are gonna be putting some washers in here. When we lift it up, it makes some loud noises and this should solve it. We just need something in between here to keep the space. I'm gonna grab the skid steer, put the paddle forks on there so I can lift that gate up because we're gonna need to unhook that cylinder and something needs to be holding that crowd gate up when they take it off. It's a pretty nice job. I can't get out of here when the skid steer's arms are lifted up so I just kind of have to sit here and watch them uh, fix that thing up. Now they put some washers in here so that Cylinder can't twist as much up here and then on the other side the same. Should fix the problem. This lady here is sick and she needs some medicine. We've got her in the hoop trim chute here. We're gonna put a halter on her, pull her head over. We're gonna be giving her an in vein in her neck so we need to get her head really secure so that she can't move it around at all. The two things we're gonna be giving this lady are a painkiller and a penicillin. And we're gonna be doing it both with the same needle. I'm gonna take this needle off, put it in her neck, and line it up, get it in the vein, and then we're gonna be switching between these two and injecting it into her vein. All right, she's nice and tight here. And um, we put a slip knot here. If she falls or something, I need to really quickly let her go. I can just pull this down really hard and it'll let her go. We've got red leg bands on her feet here just to make sure that when she goes to the milk and parlor that this milk doesn't go into the milk tank. So Come on lady. Come on. Now she's ready to go back in the barn. 
Another good thing to note is we don't press 100% of the medicine out of these syringes. Just in case there's an air bubble in there, we definitely don't want to get any air in their veins. I just gave that cow antibiotics. She is a milk cow, but like I said, we're going to be separating that milk and dumping it down the drain. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but in Canada, every single load of milk that gets picked up from a dairy farm is tested for antibiotics, and if it's positive, it'll be dumped. It's the day after Christmas, Boxing Day up here in Canada. And uh, we just got a bunch of snow yesterday, so we had to put some bedding in on Christmas in the corrals. That's okay, it doesn't take too long. But now I'm going to be pushing the snow. I didn't want to do it yesterday, take up a couple hours, but uh, I don't know. We probably got four or five inches in total, and we just want to clean the yard off. We've been pushing the snow around the yard now, got it nice and clean in front of the milk barn and the other barns over there. What we do with the first snowfall of the year, we typically try to pack it all down and compress it so that when the next snowfall comes, when we plow the snow off the yard, we don't end up taking up a bunch of gravel and we kind of slide over the ice layer or the snow layer that we've packed down with all the equipment. So this is the second decent snowfall we've had this year. We got a bunch of snow piled up here past the shop. And I'm not gonna bother pushing all that snow because that's probably twice as much yard as what I've already done. And we don't really have enough snow to justify pushing everything. That's gonna add another two hours probably. So I'm just gonna scoop this up and dump it on the field. We gotta get this thing filled up with grain. This is where we put our barley grain before it goes through the roller mill here. This is the roller mill shed. Comes in through this auger, gets rolled, goes out that auger up into the bin over there. I should probably also get this cleaned up. This flap's kinda loose, letting some stuff spill out. This is the bin that grain goes in after it's rolled, and then we can put it into the feed wagon. Pretty nice day out today. This is the truck we're going to be using and we're going to have to move three loads over. This is the shop that we park the feed wagon and the loader in. It's heated, feed wagon goes here, the loader goes over there. And there's just enough room to squeeze this truck in here. We like to keep it in here because it just starts better in the winter time when it's been sitting nice and warm.
we're gonna need this auger and that auger on the tractor there just gonna turn the choke on first that started pretty good These are 7,500 bushel hopper bottom bins. We need to take the grain out of the last one there and I need a hopper. So we're gonna try and drag that one. It's got a bit of canola from when we shipped it a couple days ago. We're gonna try and drag it over there. I think it'll be pretty easy with the snow to slide right over. Maybe shoveling was easier. It doesn't really matter too much that there's still some canola in there. Most of it is just gonna stay in there when we start augering out that barley grain. But it doesn't matter if a little bit gets into the feed. truck here waiting for it to fill up I want to give a shout out to the 10th generation dairyman from down south in the States and also the hoof GP from the UK you guys shouted me out in your channel said you guys watch my videos completely blows me away um, that you guys are watching my videos because before I started making these videos I was definitely watching you guys and I was like hey I want to do that too and uh, yeah it's just insane that you guys have seen my videos and like them and I really appreciate the shout out so if you guys haven't seen those guys which I doubt but if you haven't for whatever reason definitely go check out the 10th generation Dairyman and the Hoof GP on YouTube. Got that truck filled up now we're gonna hop into this tractor right here drive it over to that barley bin so we can get it lined up and dump that first load. I got a little lever at the back of the truck here. I'm just start dumping her. Just starting to load the second load from that bin there and uh, not even a quarter full yet and it's empty so we're gonna have to move that little yellow auger again I gotta find out which bin we should be taking out of but I think it's one of the big 10,000 bushel hopper bottoms one of these two bins here apparently has barley in it I'm gonna go climb to see which one it is Perfect, this is it. Sure is a nice view up here. Just gonna use this smaller hopper over here. Be quite a bit of work to lug one of those big ones all the way out here. Perfect, time to get the truck again. This is the last load we're dumping into it. I'm just gonna climb up that ladder and knock on the side to make sure we don't overfill this bin.
shovel those corners out yet. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed, make sure you check out the Instagram. It's at sasdutchkid. Hit those like and subscribe buttons down below and I hope to see you guys in the next video.